rice theorem any non trivial trivial property of a recursively enumerable language is undecidable this is the definition this is what is rice theorem okay now to understand this theorem we will we'll first try to understand what is property of a language what is property of language okay because we are talking about some property of here recursively enumerable language so property of we should know what is property of a language and in that too what is non trivial property okay what is non trivial property if you try if we try to understand these two things then this theorem will be easily understandable now actually what is property of languages see property can be is a function actually is a function okay now uh, we say we say if if a language l so if we define property as p uh, we we say that a language l if language l satisfies the property satisfies the property then then p of l is equal to s yes. okay so this language l will be mapped to s yes if this property p is satisfied okay if l does not satisfy satisfy the property then p of l is equal to no this language will be mapped to a no class okay so here suppose you have a set of languages so here in this case we are interested in property of recursively enumerable languages so we will consider if we have a set of recursively enumerable languages a property is a function is a function that maps this language to either yes or no there are multiple languages recursively uh, enumerable languages here so one language if this corresponding property is satisfied it will be mapped to x yes if some for some language if it is if this property is not satisfied then it will be mapped to no so so that is what is property of a language okay now coming to what is non trivial property coming to non trivial property so property is a function that is going to map every possible language in this set to either a yes or no based upon if the language satisfies this property it will be mapped to yes if the language does not satisfy the property that is defined then it will be mapped to no now coming to non trivial property what is non trivial property so before non trivial property we will try to get what is trivial property if suppose you have a set of enumerable languages set of recursively enumerable languages and if there exists some property that is going to map all the languages in this set to only one of the class say for example all s and there is no mapping for no class at all so in that case we call it as trivial property we call it as a trivial property the either way is also called as a trivial property say for example if you have a set of recursively enumerable language and if you have a property that is defined over this set of recursively enumerable language and all the languages in this set if it is mapped only to no if the property is not satisfied for this language and it is mapped only to no 
then that property is called as trivial property. Now, if we were able to understand what is trivial property, then obviously we can understand what is non-trivial property. So, non-trivial -tri property, so if the domain is set of recursively enumerable language, a non-trivial property will map some of the languages in this domain to S and some of the languages to no. That is, at least one language will be no or if at least one language is in S, then we call it as non-trivial. That is, in both the uh, uh, codomain values, some domain should be mapped. Okay. So, if that is the case, we call it as non-trivial property. Say, for example, we take an example for non-trivial property. Okay. Let us assume the property P we define as L is a finite set. L is a finite language. So, what I mean by finite language? It contains a set of strings that are countable. Okay. Oh, that is a finite language. So, if L is finite, so recursively enumerable language can be both finite and infinite. It can be both finite and infinite languages. All this can come as set of recursively enumerable languages. So, if we are going to define a property that L is a finite language, those languages that are finite will be mapped to the S case and those languages that are infinite will be mapped to no case. Okay. Again, one more property we can define which is non-trivial that is L is equal to phi. What, what is this phi? L is a null set. So, here we can have at least one a language that contains an that is empty set that will be mapped here with yes and all other things will be mapped say for example in the set of recursively uh, enumerable language enumerable language if we consider one language is an empty language okay then that will be mapped to s yes, and all other language may be mapped to no in this case here again P is a non-trivial property. Now, again we can define one more property. L contains contains substring substring 1 1 1. L contains all the strings in L contains substring 1 1 1. So, there may be few languages that will satisfy this property. Suppose this is here the sigma is over maybe 0, 1. We may have languages, recursively enumerable languages over A and B. So, this won't uh, come be mapped to, I mean, if this if, if we have a language that is over sigma is equal to A, comma B, then this property won't be satisfied for such a type of recursively enumerable languages. So, all these uh, all these languages are undecidable. All these languages are undecidable. So, now coming to the definition of Rice theorem, what is given? Any non-trivial property of recursively enumerable language is undecidable. Is undecidable. That is what is Rice theorem. Thank you.